Our new year always brings new opportunities, challenges and developments, but what can we expect to change in the world of content marketing in 2022? Stay tuned as I look into my crystal ball to find out. You're listening to the Content 10X podcast, where it's all about content repurposing. I'm Amy Woods, and I'm here to help you maximize your content and find smart ways to get your message in front of more of the right people, whilst also saving time. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to the first episode of the Content 10X podcast in 2022. As always, I'm your host, Amy Woods, founder of Content 10X, and you're listening to my annual predictions episode, where I discuss what content marketing trends I think are going to be big in the next 12 months. Now, I've actually been doing this for five years running, starting back in 2018, and so far, I've not been too far wrong with my predictions. But that's enough looking back for this episode. I want to turn your attention to the next 12 months. Content marketing is like a living, breathing thing in that it's constantly changing. Every year we see iterations both big and small which affect what kind of content we create, how we distribute it and how it connects with our audiences. Staying ahead or even just staying on top of these changes is definitely challenging, especially after we face so many unexpected events over the last couple of years. But it's vital to keep an ear close to the ground so that you can make the most of any content marketing developments that could help to serve your business. So what content marketing changes or focuses can we expect to see in 2022? Here are my six predictions. Number one, preparation for the metaverse. Now, I'm certainly no expert on the metaverse, but I think it would be remiss not to mention it in this episode because the metaverse is being dubbed the future of the internet, but the definition of metaverse is still pretty vague, to be honest. Generally speaking, it's all about immersive virtual and augmented reality. So we hear how we'll have a virtual identity and we'll partly live in a virtual world where we'll own and buy things, we'll meet with each other, We'll go between different platforms or worlds as one persona and there'll be interchangeable digital currency across platforms. Mark Zuckerberg is so convinced this is the future that he renamed Facebook as in the overall holding company that owns Instagram and WhatsApp, Messenger and Facebook, the app, to Meta. And Meta are investing an eye-watering billions of dollars on AR and VR technology to bring this to life and of course then be a leader in Metaverse tech. So I think we're a way off living in the metaverse, but maybe not as far as you think. And of course, it will start to seep in over time because we only have to look at how 2021 saw a huge interest in the world of NFT, so people buying and selling digital art, to see this metaverse concept coming to the forefront. So what does it mean for content marketing? Well, I'm not sure if it'll mean an awful lot in 2022, but I think the metaverse has the potential to completely completely transform content marketing in the next decade in ways that we can barely even think of yet. There are lots of demos out there right now and we don't know which ones are the future. But just imagine webinars or live streams or online events becoming virtual reality events, so simply attended by wearing glasses and then combining physical and virtual worlds together. We'll see a lot of experimentation and we'll see a lot of businesses and creators trying to work out how content will work in the metaverse and trying to jump on the tech when it's available. So it's hard for enterprise and mid-level businesses to start to fully consider how this will play into the marketing in the future. But I imagine some may start to set time and budget aside for educating and investing in this new way of connecting so they can be a leader. Okay, prediction number two. Social media will be less social and more content. So how social are your social media channels right now? Because last year I talked about a shift from social content to creator-led content. And I think this movement has fully solidified into how we use and engage with many of the social media channels. Going forward, I think we'll continue to see content-led platforms winning and content-first features on platforms become more popular. 
So think about Instagram Reels, for example, and how Instagram shows you the content they think you'll like rather than the content from people you actually follow. And it works, right? Reels are extremely popular. We're given content we enjoy versus looking at what our friend ate for lunch, and we like it. We want more. The FOMO that leads us to social media platforms is very much still there, but it's content FOMO, not social FOMO. So businesses will still create content to build an audience and build trust within that audience, but they'll also be considering how captivating their content is in the moment, thinking about top of funnel content and how you can reach more people organically on the content-led platforms if it's done well. And this brings me on to my next prediction. Prediction number three. Owned content continues to be paramount. The great Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp and Messenger outage of 2021 showed many businesses just how reliant they are on platforms that they don't control. Some people were fully freaking out about their entire sales and marketing funnel being void because they couldn't post anything on those channels. They couldn't access their audience. And Clubhouse, remember Clubhouse and all the time people were investing in that, Where's that gone now? Social media is of course a huge and important part of many content marketing strategies, but I think that we'll see businesses ensure that there is the right balance of investing in social media and investing in content for their website, podcast, app, email list platforms that they own and have full control over. Having an audience where you have control is far more valuable than often fickle social media followers. Now, that being said, you do have to tell people about your core content and lead people to it. So I predict that we will see more businesses repurposing pillar content that they created for their own land onto social media channels that lead people back to their own land. Something I've been shouting about for years and hey, it's what we do as a business here at Content 10X. Hey, just a little break from this week's episode to let you know about becoming a Content 10X Insider. If you want more content repurposing tips and advice, then why not join hundreds of business owners, marketers, and content creators who get them delivered straight to their inbox once a week by subscribing to the Content 10X newsletter. As well as tips and advice, you get industry updates, inspiring stories, exclusive content offers, and more. You can subscribe at content10x.com forward slash newsletter, and there's a link in the show show notes too. Okay, back to this week's episode. Prediction number four, more influencer marketing. I think the days of influencer marketing being a bit of a dirty word in the marketing industry are over. Influencer and sponsor user generated content has proven to be some of the most successful marketing content out there. And I think more businesses are going to find creative ways to embrace it. Influencer marketing is a tactic we've seen thrive in the hair, beauty and clothing industries, just to name a few, and it's risen in popularity in B2B industries too. No surprise, because it's tapping into existing connections and trust between people and their followers. Real people sharing real stories with their fans is powerful for increasing trust in a brand, and more trust means more sales. At Content 10X, we're working with our amazing client TechSmith on influencer content, helping them to repurpose it into blog posts and social media posts and maximize its impact online. TechSmith are a leader in the video tech industry and I expect many more businesses just like them will be following their lead in the next 12 months and working on influencer marketing and repurposing influencer campaigns. Overall, I predict that more budget will be allocated for sponsor generated content and influencer collabs, as well as repurposing the resulting content. And we'll see niche businesses partnering with niche influencers to get the biggest bang for their buck. Prediction number five, the same content on the same channel offered in bite size and long form content. Let me just explain. So a big trend I'm seeing right now is popular video channels and podcasts offering two ways of consuming the same content. One is your traditional long form episode, for example, a full interview, and then also bite size segments. Now, of course, this is nothing new if I was talking about offering bite size repurposed segments on other
other channels, for example, on social media. So taking that long video or podcast episode and snipping it up into shorter, shareable snippets on social, that's really common. But what I mean is, for example, the same podcast, putting out a mixture of long and short episodes every week, where the short episodes are snippets taken from the longer ones. One example of this is Stephen Bartlett's podcast, Diary of a CEO, one of the most popular business podcasts in the UK and beyond. He puts out interviews which can be up to two hours long, but also he alternates these long episodes with 10 minute episodes with high value moments from the conversations. Other shows do this too, the High Performance Podcast, Feel Better Live More Podcast. This is becoming really popular. And it's really clever because firstly, when I go over to the podcast in my podcast app and I'm deciding what episode to listen to, I can listen to a short 10 minute section of a long interview to see if I want to listen to the rest of it. So it helps me make that decision. But secondly, if I have listened to the episode already, it's providing me with a nice trip down memory lane with this hand selected best bit. And third, it's helping the show put out more content on the apps, which helps them gain more exposure and a bit of love with the algorithms. But digging deeper into this, I think creators are realizing that while people like to consume content in different formats and locations, they also simply have different time constraints or attention spans. So repurposing content into different durations, as well as formats, is a brilliant way to keep people's attention for longer. Because after all, it's better for people to listen to 100 percent of a five minute episode than zero percent of an hour long episode. It's a neat thing to do and I think we're going to see more of this. And lastly, prediction number six, maximizing hybrid and virtual events. Now, as in-person events claw their way back seemingly against all odds at times, I think the virtual element is going nowhere fast. Now, businesses that traditionally ran in-person events have figured out how to reach people both in the room and way beyond it. I think that attention will turn to boosting the ROI even further. Yes, I'm talking about content repurposing because what's so great about virtual and hybrid events is that mostly everything gets recorded. There's lots of video footage. Think about how much further all your event content goes when you have video footage because with quality video content comes quality content repurposing. Some companies have already reached out to us to help them with repurposing their events and we are all over this. So we now not only help speakers repurpose their talks into fantastic content but we help event organizers to turn their talks, seminars, roundtables, and so on into brilliant digital content. With so many events now streamed live or available in some virtual format, it's just a no brainer. So to recap, my six content marketing predictions for 2022 are number one, preparation for the metaverse. Two, social media will be less social, more content. Three, owned content continues to be paramount. Four, more influencer marketing. Five, the same content on the same channel offered in bite size and long form content. And six, maximizing hybrid and virtual events. But of course, anything can happen. So do stay on top of all the changes and updates by following the Content 10X podcast, where I give weekly updates on content repurposing, content marketing, and more. So I hope this has given you some insight into what to expect in the world of content marketing and repurposing in 2022. And one final thing to mention in this episode is that I predict our brand new service Video 10X Exec is going to be huge in 2022. So we're now working with businesses to help them record incredible content and then we apply our content repurposing expertise. So this is where people perhaps struggle to actually get that weekly regular video or podcast content to us. So we have solved that problem by working with you to record conversational video interviews to get that core content and we then repurpose that content into more video content, podcast content, blog posts, social media content and more. So to find out more about this service just head to our website, go to content10x.com forward slash video 10x dash exec or just search video 10x exec on the site and you'll find everything you need to know about this new service. Now, if you have a content marketing prediction or any thoughts on what I've shared in this episode, then please do get in touch with me. You can contact me on social media. I'm at Content10x on all the platforms. 
All that's left to say is thank you so much for listening to this first episode of 2022 and do keep tuning in for more. I'll catch you in the next episode. Oh, 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 o